Welcome to Story Station, Season 2, Episode 16. In this episode, you can listen to two Middle Eastern stories. The first story is titled, The Story of the Husband and the Parrot. A magical parrot meets a terrible fate because of the actions of a dishonest wife. The second story is titled, The Story of the Fisherman. This fisherman fishes up an evil genie who has terrible intentions. Hope you enjoy it! I'll read a story called The Story of the Husband and the Parrot. A good man had a beautiful wife, whom he loved passionately and never left if possible. One day, when he was obliged by important business to go away from her, he went to a place where all kinds of birds were sold and bought a parrot. This parrot not only spoke well, but had the gift of telling all that had been done before it. He brought it home in a cage and asked his wife to put it in her room and take great care of it while he was away. Then he departed. On his return, he asked the parrot what had happened during his absence, and the parrot told him some things that which made him scold his wife. She thought that one of her servants must have been telling tales of her, but they told her it was the parrot, and she revol- resolved to revenge herself on him. When her husband ne- next went away for one day, she told the servant to turn the bird's cage into a handmill, another to throw water down from above the cage, and a third to take a mirror and turn it in front of its eyes, from left to right by the light of a candle. The servants did this for part of the night, and did it very well. The next day, when the husband came back, he asked the parrot what he had seen, and the bird replied, My good master, the lightning, thunder, and rain disturbed me so much all night long that I cannot tell you what I have suffered. The husband, who knew that it had neither rained nor thundered in the night, was convinced that the parrot was not speaking the truth. So he took him out of the cage and and threw him so roughly on the ground that he killed him. And nevertheless, He was sorry afterwards, for he found that the parrot had spoken the truth. The Greek king, said the fisherman to the genius, had finished the story of the parrot he added to the vizier. And so, vizier, I shall not listen to you, and I shall take care of the physician, in case I repent, as the husband did, when he had killed the parrot. But the vizier was determined. Sire, he replied, the death of the parrot was nothing, but when it is a question of the life of the king, it is better to sacrifice the innocent than save the guilty. It is no uncertain thing, however. The physician, physician, Duban, wishes to assassinate you. My zeal prompts me to disclose this to your majesty, and if I am wrong, I deserve to be punished as a vizier was once punished. What had the vizier done, said the Greek king, to merit the punishment? I will tell your majesty, if you will do me the honor to listen, answered the vizier. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. The next story begins in a moment. I will read a story called The Story of the Fisherman Sire, there was once upon a time a fisherman so old and so poor that he could scarcely manage to support his wife and three children. He went every day to fish very early, and each day he made a rule not to throw his nets more than four times. He started out one morning by moonlight and came to the seashore. He undressed and threw his nets, and as he was drawing them towards the bank, he felt a great weight. 
He thought he had caught a large fish and felt very pleased. But a moment afterward, seeing that instead of a fish, he only had in his nets the carcass of a donkey, and he was much disappointed. Vexed with having such a bad haul, when he had mended his nets, which the carcass of the donkey had broken in several places, he threw them a second time. And drawing them in, he again felt a great weight, so that he thought they were full of fish. But he only found a large basket full of rubbish. He was much annoyed. Oh, fortune, he cried, do not trifle thus with me, a poor fisherman, who can hardly support his family. So saying, he threw away the rubbish, and after having washed his nets clean of the dirt, he threw them in for a third time, but only drew in stones, shells, and mud. He was almost in despair. Then he threw his nets for the fourth time, and when he thought he had a fish, he drew them in with a great deal of trouble. There was no fish, however, but he found a yellow pot, which by its weight seemed full of something, and noticed that it was fastened and sealed with a lead, with the impression of a seal. He was delighted. I will sell it to the founder, he said. I have the money. I shall get for it. I shall buy a measure of wheat. He examined the jar on all sides, and shook it to see if it would rattle. But he heard nothing, and so, judging from the impression of the seal in the lid, he thought there must be something precious inside. To find out, he took his knife and with little trouble opened it. He turned it upside down, but nothing came out, which surprised him very much. He set it in front of him, and whilst he was looking at it attentively, such a thick smoke came out that he had to step back a pace or two. This smoke rose up to the clouds, stretching over the sea and the shore, forming a thick mist, which caused the fisherman much astonishment. When all the smoke was out of the jar, it gathered itself together, and became a thick mass in which appeared a genius, a genie, twice as large as the largest giant. And when he saw such a terrible-looking monster, the fisherman would like to have run away, but he trembled so with fright that he could not move a step. Great king of the genie, cried the monster, I will never again disobey you. And at these words, the fisherman took courage. What is this you are saying, great genie? Tell me your history and how you came to be shut up in that vase. At this, the genie looked at the fisherman haughtily. Speak to me more civilly, he said, before I kill you. Alas, why should you kill me, cried the fisherman. I have just freed you. Have you already forgotten that? No, answered the genie, but that will not prevent me from killing you. I am only going to grant you one favor, and that is to choose the manner of your death. But what have I done to you? asked the fisherman. I cannot treat you in any other way, said the genie, and if you want to know why, listen to my story. I rebelled against the king of the genie, and to punish me, he shut me up in this vase of copper and put on the leaden cover this seal which is enchanted enough to prevent my coming out. Then he had the vase thrown into the sea. During my first period of captivity, I vowed that if anyone should free me before a hundred years were past, I would make him rich even after his death. But that century passed, and no one freed me. In the second century, I vowed that I would give all the treasures in the world to make my, to my deliverer, but he never came. In the third, I promised to make him a king 
to always be near him and to grant him three wishes every day. But that century passed as the other two had done, and I have remained in the same plight. At last I grew angry at being captive for so long, and I vowed that if anyone would release me, I would kill him at once, and would only allow him to choose in what, sh in what manner he should die. So you see, as you have freed me today, choose in the way that you will die. The fisherman was very unhappy. What an unlucky man I am to have freed you. I implore you to spare my life. I have told you, said the genius, that that is impossible. Choose quickly. You are wasting time. The fisherman began to devise a plot. Since I must die, he said, before I choose the manner of my death, I conjure you on your honor to tell me if you were really in that vase. Yes, I was, answered the genie. Genie. I really cannot believe it, said the fisherman. That vase could not contain one of your feet, even. How could your whole body go in? I cannot believe it unless I see you do the thing. The genie then began to change himself into smoke, which, as before, spread over the sea and the shore, and then which, collecting itself together, began to go back into the vase slowly and evenly, till there was nothing left outside. Then a voice came from the vase, which said to the fisherman, Well, unbelieving fisherman, here I am in the vase. Do you believe me now? The fisherman, instead of answering, took the lid of lead and shut it down quickly over in the vase. Now, O oh genie, he cried, ask pardon of me, and choose by what death you will die. But no, it will be better if I throw you into the sea, whence I drew you out. And I will build a house on the shore, to warn fishermen who come to cast their nets here, against fishing up such a wicked genius as you are, who vows to kill the man who frees you. At these words, the genie did all he could to get out, but he could not, because of the enchantment on the lid. Then he tried to get up by cunning. Thank you for listening to Story Station. We are adding stories as frequently as possible, so check back often. We would love to hear your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you.